Hi again then guys and welcome to another instalment of Pumping Iron on Forza Horizon 3, the review series for the pretty broad categories of muscle car, custom, hot rod, that kind of thing, both newer and older. We're now discussing another DLC car, specifically from the Hot Wheels car pack, and as I've said recently in a top speed tune which I did for this car, this is my favourite car of the entire Hot Wheels pack, hands down, the Hot Wheels Bone Shaker. I didn't have huge expectations for this car, but it really does deliver. It has incredible all-round ability, in fact. But let's not overhype it, and let's compare it in our five major categories to some of the other cars in this category to find out how good it actually is. First of all, then, as always, we have the handling. And for the handling, I'm not going to go ridiculous and say that it's perfect. It's certainly not. I'm going to give it a four because it's already a one ton vehicle. It weighs a thousand kilos, and I know there is a slight difference between UK tons and American tons, but here in the UK, that's one ton. And that is a big advantage over many of the other muscle cars. The fact that it's also very low, it carries its weight and its center of gravity nice and low, and has an ultra, ultra wide track, like a formula car, means that it actually handles remarkably well for a car which doesn't look like it should. The front end can be a little bit twitchy, which isn't overly surprising, but at the same time it allows it to be very, very maneuverable both on and off-road. And when you tune it, it's actually surprisingly good as a cornering machine. I love using this car for its handling, among other things. As far as its acceleration goes, I'm actually going to give it another four, because although stock in the A-Class, it's still got quite a bit of power and it's pretty good, it can be beaten at the same time, not necessarily by most other muscle cars, but it can be beaten, especially for higher end acceleration, but we'll get more into that in just a second. The reason why I'm giving it a four is because when you tune it, especially fully tuned, it's incredibly quick. It's the lower end and especially the lower tune versions of the car, which aren't quite as amazing. As far as top end speed, I am gonna drop it a little bit to a three, because it's not bad, again, but the top end acceleration and top speed in particular before you tune it isn't that great. It struggles to get up past 150, it can, but at the same time it takes a little bit longer to get there than you might hope. When you tune it though, the top end speed is fantastic. It can do up around 267, 268. As far as value for money goes, I'm going to give it a 3. Because, as I always say with DLC cars, the value is immediately going to take a hit of at least one point from me because of the fact that the car doesn't come with the game. Some people might not be bothered by that, but paying real money for a car which could have easily been there from day one just doesn't appeal to me. Call me old-fashioned, but I'd like my cars to be featured in the game in the first place. That is going to hurt the score. And the reason why it's getting a 3 overall apart from that is because although it's fantastic in fully tuned form, you do have to tune it very heavily for it to be that good. In the lower classes, such as A or even S1 to some degree, it's certainly not bad, but at the same time it's not the most competitive thing in the world. And speaking more specifically about that competitiveness for its all-round usability, I'm going to give it another four because it does have plenty of use and although it's not necessarily going to win everything you enter it's a good drifter a great off-roader good for acceleration and top end speed when tuned and it's fun above all else and as a tabulation of all five of those categories put together i'm going to give the bone shaker a score of 72 but that's it overall for this particular pick i'll see you guys next time and as always thanks for watching